Well, well, this is really an opportunity. You know, I've always been a, a fan of, of good government. I've always really strived to, to bring something to government that makes it better and makes it actually work uh, for the people. I, I did that when I was in the legislature. I tried to do it as a circuit judge, too, and really think that the, uh, the, the Ninth District needs that kind of representation in Congress. So, so from my point of view, it's just a, a really great opportunity to, to give something back, some would say, but also to, to, to just do something to contribute to making government, making society as we know it now better than it is. Some people have described you to me as somewhat of a moderate to conservative Democrat. Would that be an accurate depiction of your political ideology? You know, I don't, I don't really like I don't like labels. I think they're a cheap way to short, uh, shortly define uh, somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, I I think a better label for me has always been a, a really independent. Uh, I've been called by some a maverick. Um, I, I've just tried to do what I thought was best for uh, the people of my district, mm -hmm. regardless of party labels, regardless of conservative, liberal uh, labels. I, I think on, on social issues I obviously tend uh, away uh, from the uh, more liberal side of the, of the party. Fiscally, I certainly am a conservative, not only in my uh, official uh, dealings, but also in my, uh, my personal mm -hmm. uh, financial matters. So I think both uh, fiscally and, and socially uh, I'm uh, certainly uh, more moderate than Congress failed when a presidential administration misled Congress into declaring war. So, so the first aspect of any war type policy decision I make is going to be to ask tough questions about where whatever administration that we have, where they want to take us. Where, where, where does the administration want to go? Are they, at, are, are they telling us the truth? Or are they spinning a lie? And then, what's best for the people of the Ninth District as those and the nation as those issues are decided in Congress? Because obviously, Congress on the funding end of it is essential in, in war policy. So, I just I just think a, a congressman has to go into this office not saying I'm going to blindly obey whoever's elected president. Mm -hmm. But saying instead, I'm going to ask tough questions. I'm going to make sure I get answers to those tough questions. And if I don't, I'm going to, I'm going to keep asking tough questions until I get the answers, and then make decisions. We, you know, it's been suggested that we've got a long-term process in Iraq that's yet ahead of us. We got into a war that was probably, um, maybe even, uh, we were deceived as a people in, in the getting into that war. And yet, the fact of the matter is, we're in it now. Mm -hmm. And 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 any sort of uh, exit strategy has to first and foremost uh, be looking at the um, safety and security of our troops, support of our troops. So I, I'm not I'm not willing to to kind of look into anybody's crystal ball and mm -hmm. say what's going to happen in 2009 or 2010. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to be the sort of congressman mm -hmm. who's going to ask tough questions all the way through the process and demand straight answers. Mm -hmm. That's the, what I've done in, in, in the past in my uh, in my career. And what else Congressman, what are some ideas or positions you want to put forward in sort of light of this economic situation? Well, of course, you know, national economic policy uh, is, is really a broad uh, scope of, of issues. Mm -hmm. You know, I think what's important to the people of the 9th Congressional District, though, you know, gasoline and energy prices are just tearing up people that live in, out, in the, out in the country and have to drive even 15 or 20 or 30 miles mm -hmm. to go to a job. Uh, for, for, for young and growing families, child care is an increasingly expensive uh, proposition. And, and, and the combination of, of those things, the ability or inability of people to uh, get into moderately priced housing that's mm -hmm. suitable. Uh, th those, are, those are issues that we've just got to, I think, always be looking at as a priority. And, and obviously people say, you know, these are, these are pocketbook issues that are really going to be important. Mm -hmm. And I really think they are, but, but I, I'm quite frankly going to be looking at ways to ease 
I don't know that we can do anything with gasoline prices, but I think that we can do something with, uh, with some sort of tax program that might uh, even assist folks with the cost of commuting, which um, is now borne totally by the, by the consumer. Maybe do something in this area of, of uh, I increasing the, uh, the uh, tax uh, benefit for uh, parents of young children that have to have daycare mm -hmm. to uh, go to work. Um, th those are just some really quick ideas of, of things that I think we might need to look at. We have to be able to come up with a system that provides health insurance and ultimately health care for all of our citizens. A as it is now, the uninsured, their medical costs which are being incurred cost those of us that are insured who knows how many hundreds of millions or billions of dollars in, in additional insurance premiums. We, we just have to be able to devise a way, and, and there are ideas by both of the uh, Democratic presidential candidates and probably the Republican presidential uh, candidate too that would, that would address that. So uh, guaranteeing health insurance for every American mm -hmm. is, I think, the basis of where we need to be going forward from as a country.